What's up, family? The world is changing before our eyes. First, it started with a pandemic in 2020, which killed millions of Americans and people. And now most are dealing with the pandemic and the recession that we are dealing with right now, wondering how people are going to survive with less money to spend on the necessities just to live an everyday life. And now it appears that we have a new crisis on our hands. No one is trusting the banks anymore after the recent waves of bank runs. And sadly enough, things just continue to get worse. Now it appears that your money is no longer safe anymore. Well, guys, we are receiving huge warnings from Congress as of recently, in which, as you can see right here, that the senators are warning about the next U.S. bank run that actually could be rigged. What are they talking about, guys? Well, lawmakers are calling for an investigation into the SVB collapse, fearing hostile foreign governments will use social media to manipulate the markets, in which that's exactly why they are calling, they're saying that it could be actually rigged. Now, Senator Kane was one of the 16 Senate Democrats who voted in 2018 to roll back some of the post-financial crisis regulations on mid-sized banks, the Dodd-Frank rules, were designed to prevent a repeat of the rolling disasters of 2009 and outline how banks manage risk and how much capital that they actually have to keep in reserves. And Senator Kane thought that they were too erroneous. And But he does admit that he's never seen a bank run start on Twitter. Who would have thought, guys? But anyways, well, that was not necessarily reality when we really were thinking that uh, much about when Dodd-Frank was actually done. But anyways, guys, he said that we better start thinking about it right now versus later. Yes, guys, we all know that Silicon Valley Bank collapsed earlier in March after it became clear that it had a bad bet on long-dated government debt, which meant that it no longer had enough capital to comfortably pay back depositors. And many of its customers were venture capitalists and tech company founders, some of whom spread news and speculation on WhatsApp, Slack, and social media platforms, driving a panic, some analysts say, and lawmakers say that they think actually helped accelerate the bank's demise. And the senator isn't just worried that a crisis like this could happen again. He's worried that someone will actually make it happen. Yes, guys, he fears that because of this growing news in regards to these banks and these bank runs actually happening on social media, he perceives that uh, someone uh, with ill intention could actually start this type of news on on social media in regards to a new type of bank run in which they will actually do it on purpose which would make millions of Americans as well as individuals all over as well as businesses as well end up losing all of their money. So guys you need to be aware of this because depending on where you bank and how much money you have at your particular bank especially if it is not insured by the FDIC uh, guys you could be uh, injected into an issue that could be involved with a rigged bank bank run, which basically, guys, you could lose all your money. So you definitely want to be mindful of that. But also we are seeing in the news that uh, if you guys use the different types of payment apps, such as Venmo, uh, PayPal, Cash App, and many, many more, they are telling you that you don't need to keep a lot of money in those particular payment apps. Uh, guys, they are telling you that if you do have a lot of money, such as more than $100 or maybe more than $50, you probably need to move that money back into your regular bank establishment. But anyways, guys, it says right here that uh, do you store a few hundred bucks into Venmo, PayPal, or Cash App? If you do, you need to move your money right now. That money is not protected and it could vanish in a bank run. According to the federal watchdog, he is saying that billions of dollars are actually at risk right now because according to the data numbers, that is exactly how much money is sitting in multiple of these particular payments payment apps. So again, guys, they are telling you that uh, people who store a few hundred bucks in these particular apps could lose their money, their hard-earned money, according to a federal government watchdog. Now, according to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, they are saying that those funds might not be safe in a financial crisis. These particular payment apps are hugely popular and billions of dollars are at risk, according to the Bureau. Now, this particular alert comes in the wake of the failures of banks like Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, as well as First Republic Bank, when worried customers pulled out their money 
in an influx. And yes, guys, according to the Consumer Financial Bureau, they are saying that users of Venmo and other digital payment apps were using them to store funds as they would in a traditional bank or a credit union account. But those are not operated the same, guys. Your money is vulnerable. Your money is definitely not insured by the FDIC. So depending on how much money you are holding in those payment apps, uh, guys, you need to be careful out there. Go ahead and move all, if not most of it, into your financial institution. And hopefully your financial institution that you use, such as Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, or many others like that, uh, those are the banks that are actually uh, performing very well in order to protect your money, to insure your money by the FDIC, typically up to $250,000. So again, guys, move your money as quickly as possible. Don't become a victim to this potential uh, bank runs that could happen in the near future. But anyways, guys, also we are hearing this information from a macro guru in which the U.S. government may actually start restricting your right to pull out your money from your bank. As the panic continues to grow in regards to our money being safe in our financial institutions, uh, yes, guys, they might actually prevent you from removing your money, which definitely scares all of us, guys. We want to feel like if we put our money into the particular bank, that we can get our money back out whenever we choose to, whether that's from a digital platform or whether we go directly to the uh, bank brick and mortar location to pull out our money. But they're saying that rumors are going on right now that the U.S. government could actually restrict you from removing all of your money out at a bank at a specific time. Basically saying that if you have $100,000, you cannot remove all that money at one time. You have to remove it in different instances over a certain period of time. And guys, that's just not right. If it is my money, I want to be able to remove my money right now or whenever I choose to. Not saying that the government has the right to tell me when I can remove my money. This is probably the main reason why years and years ago, uh, most of Americans felt like they couldn't trust Trust the bank. They felt like they were more safe by just putting their money in between their mattresses or either in their shoebox. But now we have grown accustomed to actually uh, trusting these particular banks and storing our money there. But they're saying, guys, that brings huge risk. So I definitely want to bring that to your attention as well. And then in addition to that, guys, we also were notified about four major risks that are still facing banks and why we should actually care about them. And I do want to share that information with you today, guys. They are saying that banks face huge unrealized losses on long-term investments. The threat of more bank runs and looming defaults in the commercial real estate market is in the near future. As banks face stress, they may pull back on lending hurting the economy. And here are some of the trouble spots that the banking sector and the market watchers still have on their radars. Number one, guys, the U.S. banks are facing $620 billion in unrealized losses. That is because over the time frame, over the years, guys, during this entire bull market, there have been a lot of unrealized losses, basically meaning that Banks have invested in all of these commercial sites in which the pandemic pretty much ended those guys because no one is going to work every day in which it means that those commercial sites are being operated empty. No one is using them in which there is a lot of money being lost by the owners of these huge commercial real estate properties in which they're saying that up to $620 billion hasn't been realized as of yet, guys. So once that money is actually realized, that is going to cause a strain for the U.S. economy. And then the next thing that we have on the list is in regards to mid-size and regional banks are still facing bank runs. We just talked about that right now, guys. And perhaps most imminent threat facing the banking system is the outflow of funds from mid-size up to regional banks, which are a key part of the U.S. financial system. And wealthy depositors move their funds from these particular banks to larger institutions like Chase and Bank of America over fears of additional bank runs. San Francisco's First Republic Bank lost around $70 billion in deposits. And guys, it could happen to more banks here in the near future, especially as we just talked about the fear of a rig bank run. So you definitely want to be mindful of that, guys. And then also, U.S. banks hold around $3.1 trillion in commercial real estate loans, and smaller banks are particularly exposed to a downturn in the commercial real estate market. That is coming, guys. You need to be aware of this. 
because if you deal with a bank that invests in commercial real estate, that could cause a huge strain for you, depending on how much money you have at that particular bank. You might want to think about moving into a very larger bank that can withstand the hold, such as JP Morgan Chase Bank. So uh, anyways, guys, this is a huge red flag that we need to be mindful of. And then the fourth thing on the list is mortgage lenders are losing money on loans as uh, credit continues to tighten. They are unable to lend out money at this particular time because let's just face it, guys, the economy is dealing with a huge recession right now. Now, and this is another financial crisis, almost similar to the one that we saw back in 2009. But uh, anyways, guys, commercial lending by the U.S. banks declined by nearly $105 billion in the final two weeks of March earlier this year. And now uh, mortgage lenders are also dealing with the strain as well. So uh, anyways, guys, lenders are responding with cautious and prudent underwriting. While the lending slowdown would hurt the profitability of banks, it's a larger risk to the broader economy that relies on financials uh, to grow and to create jobs. And according to the Fed chairman, Jerome Powell, he said last month that officials are closely monitoring the availability of credit when considering whether or not to continue hiking rates in its effort to cool down the high inflation. So again, guys, those are like the four main things that we need to be worried about. And guys, I just wanted to share that information with you. And then last but not least, guys, uh, interesting fact, guys, Apple, you know, that develops the Apple iPhone, uh, they recently launched their own type of banking system in which they are now offering a savings account that is pretty much offering you 4.15% interest on your money. And yes, guys, this information was announced back in April, uh, mid-April, in which uh, Apple said that they will now offer you interest more than the regular banks on your money if you make the deposit into what they are calling the Apple savings account. So yes, guys, this was very promising news as most banks like Chase and Bank of America are only giving you an interest rate of 0.01% or even up to 0.05%. But Apple is giving you 4.15% on your money. But I did find some information in regards to this particular Apple savings account that just was released, which says right here, guys, that Apple customers are now struggling to get money out of Goldman Sachs operated savings account. So yes, guys, like I said, Apple announced this savings account back in April, and now here we are in the first of June timeframe, and now customers are actually struggling just to retrieve their money that they have in these particular savings accounts, guys. So uh, this is just another sign of what we have to look forward in the near future because basically guys your money is no longer safe be careful out there guys know exactly where you have your money at and whether or not that particular institution uh, provides FDIC insurance on your money up to $250,000 because guys you cannot afford to lose your money but anyways, guys, I hope all this information in this video was helpful to you today. Well, anyways, guys, hey, that's all I have for you today. But if you enjoyed today's content and you want to see more, go ahead, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. And if you like today's video, then go ahead and hit the like button for us. It really helps out this channel as well as it tells YouTube to share this video with others. But anyways, guys, hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching. And I hope to see you on the next video. Peace.